Ah, the medium. Bloober Team's latest foray into horror following Observer, Layers of Fear, and Blair Witch, and this one's caught people's attention in a big way. Although not all of that attention is positive, in fact, the game has been downright polarizing. Eurogamer, for instance, rated it highly in their written review, while their video review was a damning takedown. In all, The Medium is not a game I'd recommend, especially not to horror fans. And that's just one outlet that can't agree with itself on whether or not the game is good. So imagine what it's like across the internet. If you're unaware of the game, it is a horror game heavily inspired by Silent Hill, swiping many elements from Konami's franchise, including a dark alternate world, dynamic camera angles, and Akira Yamaoka. It focuses on a woman named Marianne, who has the ability to shift between the land of the living and the land of the dead, allowing her to act as a medium to help spirits move on. It's a game that intrigued me, and while I enjoyed it, there are a lot of valid concerns around the game that have split opinions straight down the middle, like much of the game's visuals. So I decided to examine the ups and downs of the game, explain why I enjoyed it, but why I also feel the criticisms are valid. Here are six reasons why the medium has split opinions. Do you get it? Because split? Because the world is split in the game? It's even called the split. Why can't I try? Silent Hill is one of the most definitive horror game franchises. Noted for its atmosphere, intricate storytelling, and horrifying monster designs, the first three games are generally considered masterpieces of the industry, with mixed reactions for many of the games that have come since. It's also a franchise that many want to see more of. When Konami unveiled PT, a new project by Metal Gear director Hideo Kojima, and it turned out to be a preview for an upcoming Silent Hill game, horror fans went nuts and then the project was cancelled as Kojima was unceremoniously fired. This led to us being in the timeline that led Kojima to create the tedious and incomprehensible Death Stranding, and for the only bit of new Silent Hill content in years, to be Heather and Pyramid Head showing up in Dead by Daylight. But the world still wants their new Silent Hill, which is why the rumours about Sony buying the franchise persist, despite it being nonsense. So the medium was set to be the next big thing. Heavily inspired by the franchise to the point where the sole non-Polish name in the developer credits is the composer who brought us Laura's theme, it was inevitably going to attract Silent Hill fans from all over the place, myself included. Which is why many are somewhat disappointed that it isn't quite Silent Hill. The inspiration is clear, but there's no bashing some vulva-faced dogs with a steel pipe, nor does it turn out that basically everything is Freudian in some way. And for many, this wasn't quite far enough an homage for them, and they were put off by the game as a result. And it's certainly true, while I have no objection with the medium going off and doing its own thing with the inspiration, others were less keen on its surface level Silent Hill elements. And for fans who've been perpetually let down for the best part of a decade now, it was perhaps the great knife that broke the mannequin's back. Why can't I trust the People come to horror games for different reasons. There are those who play horror games for the express purpose of shitting themselves silly, while others like the exploration of dark themes and facing down their fears. And for the former group, I can certainly see how the medium is a letdown. For one, there aren't many threats in the game, restricted mainly to the stilt monster with the voice of... Wait, Troy Baker? How? Sweet your skin suit. Did you, that, your, was your voice not, like, heavily edited? No. Are you serious? No. The game is instead a mystery in a spooky location where you occasionally sneak away from a tall man who wants to wear your skin. Let me try you off. Oh god, no! And if you're not freaked out by one guy who wants to wear your skin, then perhaps this isn't the game to get freaked out by. Me, I loved the atmosphere of the game. It was a brand of spooky that was more subtle and bubbling under the surface as you slowly uncover mysteries. I like uncovering mysteries in weird places after all. You know what the atmosphere reminded me of? Fair warning. This is gonna be weirder than usual. Yes, yes, I'm talking about control again. Deal with it. It's a great game. But atmospherically, there's a similar vibe. Weird stuff is going down, I'm trying to figure it out using supernatural powers. I love that in Control, I love it in the medium, and as someone who isn't fond of stalker horror, it's perhaps a big part of why I like that the game took this direction. But it's totally fair if you were expecting more hiding under benches and getting jumped in the shadows, but for me, it worked on its own merits. Why can't I 
One part of why the game wasn't scary for some was because the protagonist, Marianne, is quite talkative. She will comment on almost everything she's doing like she's let's playing her own game. Kinda sounds like a spy name. Cutters. Bolt cutters. And for a lot of people, this got massively obnoxious and people wished that she would just shut up for once. Me? I barely noticed. Maybe it's that control vibe again as Jessie Faden was also quite fond of the sound of her own voice. And that never bothered me either. I think it contributed to the point and click feeling the game gives off a lot of the time. After all, no one ever complained about Guybrush 3 port commenting on everything he picked up, did they? But again, if you wanted the game to spook you more with atmospheric noises, it's perhaps understandable that you might not be too keen on the protagonist talking to herself most of the time. Why can't I just let go? The medium was a technical challenge for the developers. The idea of the game has existed for a while. It was originally conceived for the PS3, 360 and Wii U, but it's only now that the tech has caught up to their ambitions. And yet, despite that, the dual world setup has still caused noticeable issues with performance. My PC, built less than a year ago, ran it mostly fine. Not exactly a buttery smooth 60fps, but I'm not bothered for a game where you walk and look at a bunch of things. And bear in mind that while playing through this game I was also recording it, as you can see by the existence of this footage. And then, oh no, this area, oh no, it doesn't, doesn't like this. This room is far too big for rendering twice at once with different environments. Yeah, I think I see the problem. This is definitely one area where the medium lets itself down a little bit. And this is coming from someone who can forgive most performance issues, as long as the experience isn't massively hampered by them. Perhaps because I'm so forgiving, I was willing to let moments like this frame rate drop pass me by. This was made by a team of fewer than 100 people, and issues like this are expected on smaller budgets. They actually did a pretty good job for an ambitious project that requires every environment to be rendered twice at once. But yeah, those frame rate issues are pretty frequent. Why can't I just let go? One major point of contention, and one that varies heavily from person to person, is how the game handles some major issues. If you don't want spoilers, you might want to click away now because we're covering them for much of the rest of the video from this point on. Two major issues are brought up around the game. Number one, how the game handles trauma. And number two, a feeling that the game forgives the child abuser. I'm not going too in-depth on these criticisms because there is a lot to unpack and I don't want to turn this into an episode of Chapter Select, but in short, while there are those who view the game as saying victims of trauma are irreparably broken, I read it as a case for not hiding people with trauma away from the world, lest their trauma explode into a stilt-legged murder creature with the voice of Troy Baker's gag reflex. Okay, the metaphor is strained, I'll admit but much of the game's context places this as a world where trauma doesn't get dealt with too well. And that world is... THE ENTIRE NATION OF POLAND! Set in Krakow in 1999, if this line is any indication, So began the great dumpster heist of 1999. This places the story ten years after the fall of the Soviet Union, after fifty years of strict Soviet and Nazi rule. It's a nation that's struggling to heal, and the cast are also in the same position on a personal level. It's a story that feels like there are layers of context all rubbing up against each other, and to boil it all down to people with mental illness equals bad, feels a little short-sighted. Also, the child abuser I previously mentioned is very explicitly depicted as a gross tentacle monster who seems to attract the disdain of anyone who uncovers what he's done. Yes, we do get a sympathetic backstory for him, but the game, for me, never felt like it was excusing his actions. Okay, Richard. I get the picture doesn't change a goddamn thing. Not that I wish to diminish the feelings of those who found it rubbed them the wrong way, because this video is acknowledging why the game is polarizing, not saying why everyone who disagrees with my assessment is wrong and should feel bad, because I'd never make that video, because that's a terrible position for anyone to hold. But I do find it interesting that half the audience found it to be an exploitative mess, while the other half found it to be an interesting and complex story with a lot to process. I will say there is a feeling that Bloober Team didn't spend enough time considering some of the implications of their story, perhaps as much as they should have done. And the handling of it all has been clumsy and, for some, intensely unpleasant as a result. And that is a totally fair criticism, whether you love the game or not. Why can't I just let go? The final criticism, and one that I'm willing to agree with wholeheartedly, is the ending. 
a gunshot on a black screen and a post credit scene showing the character of Thomas picking up a watch in the spirit world, and that's it. There's a lot left unanswered, and unlike, say, The Last of Us, where the ambiguous ending enhanced its story and allowed players to determine their own conclusions, the medium's ending feels a lot like Bloober Team had created a problem and couldn't figure out how to solve it. And naturally, it's been an unpopular choice, and I rarely see any defense of it. And even as I've spent much of this video defending the game, I can't defend the ending, which was a huge letdown. On the whole though, I thought the medium was well done. I found it a messy yet compelling horror game, it provided me with enough mystery and atmosphere to be satisfied, and while I can't say the story is perfect, it was interesting enough for much of the game's runtime. But its flaws are also glaring enough that I do not begrudge anyone who felt differently, and whose experience was much less positive. If anything, I would hold the medium up as a great example of a game whose ambitions were perhaps grander than the team's ability to realise them. And that is why the medium has split opinions. Thank you for watching, and I would love to hear your thoughts on the game if you've played it, even if you hated it and think I'm wrong, although please be respectful, as always. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you can support the channel over on Patreon, you could join these lovely people whose support I'm very grateful for. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.